if you understand perspective, raise your hands. Okay. If you think you understand perspective, raise your hands. Okay. <coughs> So maybe I will try to devote some time uh, to uh, revise uh, whatever we have covered in the last uh, 2 or 3 lectures and I uh, will also talk about a new method that uh, I got introduced to by Professor uh, N.N. Kishore uh, yesterday evening I will talk about that. Uh, so you know quite a few of you guys came to me yesterday and said sir I mean uh, maybe uh, it will do us a lot good if uh, we can have an extra session. And I was like, fine. So um, after the class yesterday, I went to the uh, lecture hall office, spoke with Mr. Verma um, about the availability of any of the halls. He said L16, 11 o'clock. I said, great, fine. So and then I sat thinking, man, I mean, I'm not prepared for today. What what am I going to be doing? Uh, so maybe I'll just uh, revise whatever you have covered. And uh, then I met uh, Professor Kishore uh, in front of uh, director's office now and then uh, he explained uh, a method which uh, seemed very logical to me and then I am going to talk about that today. Hmm? So um, this scene let me animate the scene. So stay with me here ok. Um, let us say that uh, face of uh, the cube in top view is this table ok. Let us say the face uh, in top view over there is this table ok. Uh, this is the position of the viewer that is me. So, if you are looking from the top you would be looking at somebody's head ok. And uh, imagine that uh, I as a viewer am standing here and you are looking at me as well as uh, this table from the top ok. And uh, let us say that uh, this table is at an angle I am here this table is there you guys are looking at me as well as the table from the top. So, you see my head which is that point the position of the viewer that is me viewing the table in the top view. All right. Now the picture plane. How about the picture plane? The picture plane is going to be a vertical plane that would be in between the object as well as myself. Fine. Fine. All right. Good. So this is me, the viewer, object, and the picture plane is in between me and the object. The picture plane is vertical. In the top view, that would appear as a line which is here. Fine? All right. Now, my eye would be looking at different aspects or different features of the object uh, the vertex on the left, left top, right bottom, right top, and the vertices below. Okay? And those would be represented by the rays going from this point here up till all these four vertices ok. So much so for the top view. So, you get the site information you get the site information from the top view ok. Now, forget about the top view for now let us go to the front view. So, of course, you are looking at the profile view or the side view of the object this is not the true side view ok. This is the side view that is enough to give you the height information of the object fine. This is where the ground line is ok. So, this is where the object is stationed all right horizon line. So, imagine that if I am standing on the ground ok this height corresponds to the distance between my feet and my eye level ok. This is where my eye is going to be ok and so happens that in perspective views we do not need this information. So, we let go of this information all we need from the front view is the ground line and the horizon line ok. 
okay this is where my eye is and we can get the true height information from the profile view of the object okay now it doesn't really matter where the ground line is if you push the ground line below okay the object gets pushed below by the same amount and the horizon line gets pushed below by the same amount it doesn't really matter where you position this what is important is how you are positioning your horizon line so this again the line that differentiates between the sky and the ground okay your eye level so what matters is how you are positioning your horizon line with respect to the ground line that is what is important okay now the important thing for you to do is to combine the top view and the front view okay like so the picture plane the top view of the object and the viewer position a point we call it the station point these are parts of the top view okay with me okay and the ground line and the horizon line they are the part of the front view okay you're going to be getting the slight information by projecting the rays from this point to different vertices of the object and you're getting the height information by projecting horizontal lines lines which are parallel to the horizon line from this object okay now i've already covered this example so i'll quickly go through this so if you're looking at a point far away at infinity along a line parallel to this you'll be getting this point as the vanishing point now imagine just just in case uh, in the isometric drawings that we have drawn huh what yeah the projection lines are too light is it let's let's worry about that let's worry about that no way let's see how it goes so if you're looking at may i okay so if you're looking at an object along this direction far away um you'll get the image over here on the picture point projected down you get the vanishing point um so just imagine that you're drawing something very similar to an isometric view so you can imagine that this thing is um the direction along the x axis this thing is the direction along the y axis and the height is coming out of the screen okay so with that this would be the vanishing point for all the edges that are parallel to the y axis and likewise this would be the vanishing point for all the lines which are parallel to the x axis okay can't see those construction lines na okay all right all right all right <clears throat> let's see how it goes okay so you know that this edge is on the picture plane it'll be in true length project it down get the true length of this edge right uh the corresponding x lines they vanish let me be here the corresponding x lines they vanish at vpx the corresponding y lines they vanish at vpy we can't see the construction lines can we give me a moment you have seen this uh, example before uh, so you know where the lines are going to be uh, don't worry about that <laughs> uh, it's it's going to be a hard time to get this thing fixed okay uh, anyhow so you see that this vertical edge corresponding to this uh, it would be lying at uh, it would be lying um, in between these two rays vanishing towards vpy okay um this edge would lie in between the two rays vanishing towards vpx okay and then uh, draw two more vanishing lines complete the block okay this is this is something that we have seen before 
not a problem uh, something that you understand hopefully ok right. So, keep this in mind this is where I am going to be introducing you to what I say prosecutors method ok. I am going to be making a few changes and I want you guys to be attentive over here I am going to be making a few changes change number one I will not draw the perspective with pre specified vanishing points or pre found vanishing points I will not be using vanishing points at all instead what I will do is I will use the true profile view ok. okay. So, the top view remains the same from there I use projections like uh, we do in orthographic projections I name these vertices as A E. So, A is on the top E is at the bottom those as B F B on the top F at the bottom C G not the center of gravity, but C G C on top G on bottom and D H ok D on top and F on bottom once again number 1 I will not use vanishing points number 2 I will use the true profile view of the object ok and I will see if I can make a perspective a nice perspective. Of course, that is the picture plane there now if you are looking at the picture plane and the object in the front view your picture plane will be passing through the edge A E all right. If you are looking at the picture plane in the profile view how would your picture plane be look looking like it will be a line and be a line that passes through. So, it will be a vertical line ok that passes through A E that picture plane is not visible here, but let us try ok it is visible now. Now, the second thing that you would want to keep in mind look at this point here what is this point station, station point in English it is the position of the viewer with respect to the picture plane in the top view ok. So, you would know this distance from here towards the picture plane you will know this distance how would this distance show in the profile view in the profile view if you use the same distance from here to here rotate it ok come over here and plot the position of the eye on the horizon ok would be this point ok once again this is the position of the viewer in the top view ok. So, this is where the viewer is positioned with respect to the picture plane this is what the distance is from here till here ok. The same scenario if you want to capture in the profile view how would you want to do that I am here from the top you see my head you see my station point the head position with respect to the picture plane ok. What you guys see now is the profile view this is my line of horizon ok this is where I am standing of course and that is where the picture plane is ok. What is this distance from here to the picture plane is that distance the same as this distance yeah yeah all right. So, if you know this point if you know the position of the picture plane in the top view you know the distance use the same distance to locate the station point or the position of the eye of the viewer in the profile view. So, this is where the eye of the viewer will be in the profile view 
this distance is the same as this distance from here till here okay and of course the eye is going to be lying on where the horizon line right now comes the interesting part and a very logical very reasonable part <clears throat> and follow me carefully position of the eye of the viewer in the profile view all right let me use the short forms SPT station point in the top view SPP station point in the profile view. now what I'm doing is I'm looking at vertex A and vertex E from here this is very dim I'm sorry about that but uh, just imagine that I'm looking from here at vertex A and vertex E man it's going to be difficult for me to explain let me see if I see those lines this helps okay so picture plane this is a picture plane here I'm looking at vertex A and vertex E from the station point in the profile view okay uh, it so happens that uh, AE lies in the picture plane okay so I use horizontal projections directly okay and then I look at the vertex AE from the station point in the top view so it lies in the picture plane over here I take those projections and what I have over here is a vertical edge AE in perspective okay straightforward here comes the interesting part if I look at BF from the station point in the profile view right now this ray is going to be cutting the picture plane at this point okay so this means that the image of point B will be here on the picture plane in the profile view okay likewise the image of point F will be here on the picture plane in the profile view B prime F prime I project these guys horizontally okay and then I use the site information from the top view what do I do I will tell you what so follow me uh, and I will uh, make uh, certain revisions the uh, slides and then uh, post it on the web for you guys so just imagine that I am looking at B from here if I look at B from here it will be crossing the picture plane here somewhere okay I take the horizontal projection down just in case uh, that uh, you have been doing in case of uh, your conventional two point projections and then I look at F okay same thing so this ray would be cutting the picture plane here somewhere I project it down and this is what my BF is going to be it is going to be vertical again okay so this is the new thing this is the new thing this is the same thing that we have covered in the previous lectures okay so D prime H prime they will be lying at the same two points as B prime and H prime now on these two rays okay take the horizontal projections same thing from the station point here look at DH over there okay that would be cutting the picture plane somewhere over here project it downwards and then you will be seeing DH okay the same thing with CG you are looking at C from the station point SVP this would be the image of C in the picture plane on the picture plane this would be the image of G on the picture plane in the profile view okay project them horizontally now look at CG from this position use the ray that ray is going to be intersecting the picture plane somewhere project that in section downwards let that ray cut these two points or these two lines and essentially you will be getting this edge CG okay 
you have all the eight vertices that you need in your perspective figure. That's it. Yeah. You know what the interesting part is? You know what the interesting part is? You don't. If I extend the edges along the x and y directions, oh, I can see those projection lines now. If I extend these, I will be getting the same vanishing points that I have been using. So, this is the perspective using the new method, this is the perspective using the old method, new method, old method, exactly at the same locations. Okay? Now, you have a lot of questions with regard to how to choose the vanishing points over here etcetera etcetera. This actually sounded a lot more reasonable and logical to me. So, I would recommend this method to be used for even single point perspective and three point perspective that uh, hopefully I am going to be covering today. With me? Nah. Are you with me? Yes. Good. Clear? I am I'm, I'm really sorry about the projection lines. I thought they would be visible, but anyhow. Difference in the two methods. In the new method that I had introduced to you today, I did not use the vanishing points, rather, I chose to use the true profile view of the object. Okay? In the previous method that we had covered, we had used the vanishing point information, but we had not used the true profile view of the object. So, that is the difference. Okay? So, a hexagonal block, prismatic block using the new method, again I have a feeling that projection lines will not be visible, let us try. So, top view is a hexagon A G B H C I D J E K and F L are edges going into the screen A B C D E F are vertices on the top face G H I J K L are vertices on the bottom face A G F L B H E K C I D J okay? your station point in the top view SPT remains the same with respect to the picture plane here. Okay? It is so frustrating for me I mean I, I can imagine. So, imagine that you have a picture plane over here, okay, let us see if it is better. All right, so, station point SPP you are looking at edge A G, okay, so it is going to be so, these two rays are going to be intersecting with the picture point or with the picture plane here at these two points. Take the horizontal projections, okay. uh, you would actually know that face A G F L uh, it will be in true shape because the face is on the picture plane top view. So, get that face directly, no problem. A G L F, all right. Now, so yesterday I made a mess by showing too many construction lines, so I try to avoid. Uh, showing additional construction lines. Okay, so I start with new construction lines. So I'm looking at edges B H and E K. Okay, B H and E K. Okay, where will these two rays intersect? I'll get the images of E and B here, and H and K here. Okay. Take the horizontal lines. Now, I look at the edge 
B H from the station point in the top view okay, that would intersect the picture plane over here I make the projection downward essentially it's a vertical line I believe just about close to vertical line okay, so this is my H B H right I look at E K I get the intersection here project the intersection downward get the intersection between these two rays and that vertical projection here okay, and create an edge E K okay, now I look at edges C i and D j the images of which are going to be formed on these points and these points take the horizontal projection okay, from the station point in the top view I look at C i get the intersection between this ray and the picture plane over here take that intersection downward allow this vertical projection to intersect with this and this horizontal ray okay, and create the new edge C i likewise I look at D j from S p t same thing same thing same thing I have got six vertices at the top and six vertices at the bottom without using vanishing points I can join these vertices and get a hexagonal prismatic solid without the use of vanishing points pretty pretty nice very logical very reasonable method do you want to see where the vanishing points are? They have to lie on the horizon line. Stay with me. Stay with me. They have to lie on the horizon line, and so happens that they do. You get the right vanishing point here and the left vanishing point over here. Okay, now if you draw a ray that passes through SPT and this vanishing point that would be parallel to what? AB and if you draw a ray which is passing through SPT and this vanishing point that would be parallel to Huh? What 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 what? Come again. This would not be parallel to it. Which one? Why? So because when we take the vanishing point, we make a line parallel to AB and let it intersect picture plane at a point and project it down. Yes. Fine. Here we did not use the vanishing point, but but what we are doing is we are saying how these guys are going to be vanishing. What we are doing is just the reverse. We drew this perspective with the true profile view, the true top view. Stay with me. True profile view, true top view. Got this perspective. And then we are trying to figure where the vanishing points are. How do we figure the vanishing points? By looking at a pair of parallel edges vanishing at a certain point. Okay, so what I draw is a ray passing through this, a ray passing through this. Okay, these three guys apparently are what? Concurrent? They are intersecting the same point. Okay, and likewise, this horizon line and the ray which is along this edge and the ray which is along this edge they are also intersecting at the same point okay yeah now using the same method i'm going to try to construct a three point perspective 
okay. You can try constructing uh, a single point perspective using this method, simple examples. Okay. I am going to be using the example of a cube to construct a three point perspective using the same method. Okay. <coughs> So what you see is the third angle orthographic projection, the front view, the top view and the profile view. Okay. So the top view in the top view the cube is rotated by certain amount let us say 45 degrees. Okay. Now how would I get a three point perspective? Rule number n in perspective all lines have to be running away from the picture plane none of the lines should be parallel to the picture plane only then I can get a three point perspective otherwise not right right. So what do I need to do for that I need to make another rotation. So it so happens that uh, you would be getting a two point perspective in this because you have you still have an edge or rather you still have four edges 1, 2, 3 and 4 parallel to the picture plane which is here. So I need to make one more rotation okay. what would I do is I would rotate the cube in the profile view and get the respective views in the top and the front view like this use projections go back rotate this cube in the profile view by a certain amount. Okay, when I rotate this what happened to this this gets rotated about this axis okay, and this also gets modified accordingly. Okay. You have done orthographic views so it should not be very difficult for you. Now I am going to be using this picture and this picture to draw a three point perspective. Okay the top view and the true profile view right okay these vertices 1 2 3 and 4 they correspond to these four vertices over here hmm? right where are these vertices in the top view these guys or those guys careful 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 you know I was making this animation at 8 o'clock in the morning huh? the set of vertices below or the set of vertices above look at the projections these four vertices are getting projected over here these four vertices are getting projected and coming back here look at the projections. So these four vertices they will appear at the bottom or at the top in the top view at the bottom. So that is one thing that you need to keep in mind which is where I struggled for half an hour almost 45 minutes this morning. So A B C D is the bottom face E F G H is the top face in the top view. A B C D is this face here E F G H is this face here in the profile view clear look at the position of the picture plane in the top view it is passing through the vertex E this time in this example the picture plane is passing through the vertex E okay. correspondingly in the profile view the picture plane is going to be a vertical line that passes through this vertex E. Okay. I choose a station point in the top view SPT this can be any point okay. and the same rule whatever this distance is okay, I am going to be using the same distance from this picture plane in the profile view and have my eye or the station point in the profile view on the horizon line 
fine here SPP and then the drill remains exactly the same exactly the same no changes ok look at these vertices from the station point in the profile view draw horizontal projections look at the corresponding vertices in the top view from the station point SPT ok draw corresponding vertical projections find the intersections find the vertices and that is it let us get started looking at A E I am looking at A and I am extending this ray because the image of A is being formed over here on this picture plane ok take that horizontal I look at A E now I need to extend this ray because the image would actually form on the picture plane over here ok draw the verticals find the intersections and get the vertices ok the same thing for all edges all vertex pairs look at B F extend this S P P B ray to intersect with the picture plane draw horizontal from here draw horizontal from here F gets formed here the image of that look at the corresponding vertices in the top view gain sections between the ray and between the rays and the picture plane draw the verticals let them intersect with the corresponding horizontals get the vertices again same thing this is for D H and this is for the center of gravity four edges of a block of a cube ok I do not know what perspective it is I join these vertices and get a perspective weird looking thing yeah fine 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 <clears throat> I still need to convince you that this is a three point perspective option one would your block look like that or would your block look like this it would look like this yeah or this have you heard of something called a Necker's cube illusion have you heard of something called a Necker's cube illusion yes or no no yes all right for those who have not all right look at this vertex E and look at this vertex C and tell me which one is in front of the other Huh? <laughs> yeah. So if you are looking at this object, if you are looking at this object, at one time it will appear to you that vertex E is in front. At the other time it will appear to you that vertex C is in front. Careful, careful. So that is that is what the Necker's cube illusion is. yeah that is that is what the illusion is anyhow. <clears throat> so, if this is the true perspective of this cube let us try to figure out where the vanishing points are 
draw lines parallel this is my first vanishing point sorry got it wrong yeah yeah this is not the correct what i got this wrong all right i got this wrong let's see let's see where i made a mistake i have three vanishing points all right but two of them they happen to lie on the picture plane not the horizon line which is strange it's all right <clears throat> can you help me figure where i have made a mistake can you help me figure where i have made this mistake where i have made a mistake Did I think? All right, fine. Think about it. Yeah. Picture plane would be more towards the left side. No, but my picture plane. I decided my picture plane to pass through E. <laughs> I decided my picture plane to pass through E. Well, this distance I thought was the same as this distance. No idea. Where did I go wrong? The orientation. The other alternative. No, no, this nothing to do with the Necker's cube uh, illusion. Where did I go wrong? Yeah. <clears throat> Are the distances between SPT and the corresponding picture plane? Okay. All right. Okay. Are these distances equal? Yeah, looks like they are. Where did I go wrong? You know the only problem with this is that I'm getting the vanishing points on the picture plane and not the horizon line. Yeah? So this is what I'll do. Yeah? A B C D on the same plane are on the same plane. A B C D. A B.
A B E F. All right. So A B E F. Okay. So I got A B E F. Yeah. I got that plane. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. I'll post these slides on the web. You can take a look. And if you have found my mistake, share with me in the next class.